Hi friends, welcome to yet another video on Tutorials Point with me Richa. And in today's segment of Aviation module, we are going to cover a very interesting module known as Flight Deck. Well, for all of those people who are listening to this particular video, I'm sure you might have been very, very interested in knowing or rather understanding all about where the pilot sits and what are the controls that he has to make the aircraft fly. Well, in today's module, we'll discuss all of that. Let's see what is there on the agenda today. We're going to talk about the synergy between the flight deck as well as the cabin crew. We're going to talk about the basics about the cockpit crew in terms of how and uh, you know what are they doing to control the flight. Seating arrangements for the cockpit crew. We'll talk about protocol procedures for entry into the flight deck by the cabin attendants. Pilot and crew incapacitation. So let's study about this module in detail now. Well friends, in the cockpit there are a lot of instruments and control panels which the cockpit crew uses in order to take off the flight, land the flight as well as reach its destination on time. So these controls and panels are only there in the cockpit and not inside the cabin area. Let's look at the flight controls and the panels. We have the control wheel which is also known as a yoke which is used by the cockpit crew to steer the airplane in different directions. So for example, if the pilot wants to shift the aircraft towards the left hand side, he'll turn the yoke or the control wheel towards the left side. Likewise, if he wants to turn the aircraft towards the right side, he will take the control wheel or the yoke and turn it towards the right. If he wants to maintain the aircraft in a straight line, he will use the straight level. That is, he will just keep it in a normal position. So, there are a lot of aircrafts which also have a stick control rather than a yoke or a steering wheel, but the stick operates in just the same way as a wheel. Looking at the yoke movement, so if you want to turn left, you take the aircraft towards the left and the ailerons which are there on the wing part of the aircraft actually move down and that helps the aircraft turn in the left side. Well, if you want to go towards the right side or turn the aircraft towards the right, you will turn the yoke towards the right, which makes the ailerons on the wing area go up. This helps the aircraft move towards the left or the right. Let's see the movement of the yoke and ailerons. Pulling back of the yoke moves the elevator on the tail up, which helps the airplane nose up and it helps the aircraft to climb. This is a very useful technique to be used by the pilot whenever they want to take off. So while they are on the active runway, to take off the aircraft, they have to use something like this, that is pulling the yoke towards themselves. Well, again, if you want to really break the aircraft or take the aircraft towards a downward descent into approach and landing, you take the wheel or the yoke towards the forward direction, which will help the aircraft turn the elevator down and move the nose down to descend. So moving it towards the forward will help the aircraft descend and approach into landing. Well, let's talk about rudder pedals. Now, these are located at the foot of the, you know, where the pilot is sitting. In order to help break the, put, or rather apply the brakes to stop the aircraft, there are brakes which are there at the tip or the toe of the pedals, which help the aircraft to come to a complete stop area. And this is used by the pilots when they want to break. Looking at the air speed indicator, well, this shows the speed of the aircraft on ground as well as in the air. So the air speed indicator shows through the speed through the air, not on the ground area. So when the pilot wants to see how much speed he's flying with on the aircraft in the air, and he also announces it to the passengers that this is the speed of the aircraft on air right now. The pilot tube on the wing catches on the rushing air. This ram air is compared to static air to determine the air speed. And that is what is used by the pilots world over because this particular pilot tube which is there on the wing really helps to know the air speed during that particular phase of the flight when it is on air. 
Looking at the attitude indicator, now when the aircraft is moving 30,000 or 35,000 or 10,000 feet above mean sea level, we have an attitude indicator which is there in front of the cockpit crew which helps them see how far above the ground they are and it also helps them to announce to the passengers that we are such and such feet above mean sea level. So this really helps on that so friends, now we're going to talk about the direction which the flight crew or the pilot has to take care of. Whenever he is looking at this particular diagram, it shows the pilot whether he has to move towards the north, south, east or west. For example, in this particular diagram, you can see that the airplane is heading south at 175 degrees. So this really helps the pilot to keep a tab on whether they are in the right direction in order to reach the final destination. Coming to the aircraft radios, I'm sure friends you might have wondered that how do the aircraft, you know, the pilot knows what kind of, uh, you know, how does he get radio signals, how is he able to talk to the ATC or air traffic controller? Well, it is done through a help of aircraft radios. These radios are inside the cockpit and uh, the pilots use the radios to communicate with the air traffic controller and uh, also with the other pilots of other aircrafts in case the need may be. Other radios are also used to navigate using ground station or satellites. So this is something that is used by the pilots in order to keep continuous check whether they are in the right direction or whether they are going in the right way or no. Coming to the radar transporter, uh, most of the airplanes have a radar transporter which shows their location, the speed and the altitude to air traffic controllers. Now, ATC people who are sitting inside their cabin have this, you know, screen in front of them, something like this, which shows that which particular aircraft, depending on the code which is given to them, they can actually locate the exact location of the aircraft, the speed with which they are traveling as well as their altitude. This helps the air traffic control that there should not be any crash between two aircrafts and they are able to guide the pilots in the right manner for takeoff and for landing. So friends, this is very, very essential and imperative to understand. ATC is really helping the aircrafts into the smooth takeoff and landing phases. Now there is GPS also inside the aircraft, so we do not have any GPS on our phone, but we, they also have it in the cockpit. A pilot increasingly uses the GPS satellite navigation to display the position and ground speed, locate nearby airports and plot distance, distance as well as time to any particular destination. So this particular GPS really helps them to locate each and everything that they want, the nearest airport, what speed, how much time to land, so as to avoid any kind of clash with any other airline. Now, there are certain issues related with, uh, you know, this crew, the cabin crew, as well as the flight deck crew. Let's understand there are two different cultures and they create a lot of barrier. A flight deck is a completely different world and a cabin crew's world is a completely different culture altogether. There is limited joint training between the flight deck as well as the cabin attendants. Flight deck have their own set of training given by the airline and uh, cabin crew have their separate training given by that particular airline. There is no training which actually involves the cockpit crew as well as the cabin crew. Schedule constraint both formal and informal interactions. Stress generated during emergency affects the communication and hence there is a lot of barriers which we will talk about in a little while between the captain as well as the flight crew. Even if we want to understand that there are two different cultures and two different teams, at the same time there are one team because they are working together for the passengers, making sure that they are giving a good service to the passenger and making them land safely at their particular position. So hence it's important friends that they work as one team. So friends, let's look at crew characteristics. Now we have understood that the pilot or the cockpit crew is different as uh, the airline crew or rather the cabin crew is a different department altogether. Let's look at certain differences between them. Gender in the cockpit crew, you generally have male, majority are male pilots and in the cabin, you have majority of female air hostesses. Age for the flight deck crew is between primarily between 30 to 60. You will have very few pilots who are below the age of 30 or above the age of 60. 
Primarily for cabin crew, the age factor is from 20 years to 40 years. Workspace, the cockpit crew has a very confined space. They don't have the luxury of space, but the cabin crew has spacious uh, place to move about. Means the cabin is huge and they have space to move around, which is not so in case of a flight deck crew. Physical activity, well, for cockpit crew, they don't have any physical activity. They just have to stay at one place, so they are stationary. Whereas for cabin uh, crew, the uh, work revolves around of activity. So they have to keep getting up, walking here and there to passengers for service, etc. Well, uh, talking about the noise level, inside the cockpit, it is relatively quiet, means there's not much noise which is there in the cockpit. But in the cabin, there is a lot of noise factor because of passengers and announcements, etc. Terminal workload uh, means at the terminal when the aircraft has not taken off at that point the cockpit crew is highly engaged at that point of time but the cabin crew has less of engagement or they have less of work during the terminal workload. Talking about the cruise when the aircraft takes off and it is at cruise level which is 30,000-35,000 feet above mean uh, sea level that time the flight crew has low uh, workload means they don't have too much of workload but in the cabin the crew has a lot of high workload that time because of the fact that they, they have to do the service etc. Cognitive orientation is mostly technical for uh, the cockpit crew whereas it's social for cabin crew because they have to interact with the passengers. Department is uh, flight operations for cockpit crew and sales is for the cabin crew. Well friends, I'm sure you've understood that these differences is what creates a lot of stress between the cockpit crew as well as the cabin crew. Coming to different barriers now, between the cockpit crew and the cabin crew, there can be a lot of barriers, uh, be it uh, different barriers like physical, emotional, psychological. Let's took, uh, take a look at these barriers now. Historical barrier is something very simple that from time, uh, you know, from historical times, it has been said that cockpit crew has to be the primary, you know, the primary uh, source of authority and hence the pilots feel very authoritative about themselves and the chain of command is always top to bottom. So pilots feel that they have a lot of ego and arrogance. Physical, uh, well, talking about physical, the confinement of space for cockpit crew is very less. Uh, but whereas for the cabin crew, the space that they have for physical activities is a lot. Psychological or psychosocial, um, people in the cockpit do not talk much amongst them each other. Uh, whereas in the cabin, the crew have a lot of interactions amongst themselves as well as with the passengers. Regulatory, there are a lot of regulations, rules and certain uh, procedures which need to be followed uh, by the captain or rather the cabin crew also like for example inside the cabin uh, the cabin crew or the flight attendant cannot enter inside the cockpit during 0 to 10,000 feet because that is the time the cockpit crew is really busy with uh, coordination with the air traffic controller as well as takeoff period. Organizational barriers are there, well we have understood that there are two different teams altogether, hence organizational barriers are always there. Well, uh, there are stress between both the set of teams that is cockpit crew as well as cabin crew, but we are looking at certain synergies. Stress can be particularly detrimental to the successful communication as well as teamwork. So if you forget all the stresses and the cabin crew as well as the cockpit crew really uh, have good communication, it will be good for the passengers and the safety of the passengers. Effects of stress are heightened during the emergency because that is a time when you cannot really think clearly. There is good evidence from the analytics or analysis of incidents and accidents showing lack of synergy. Friends, uh, according to a lot of research, most of the accidents happen because of miscommunication between flight deck crew and the cabin crew and hence that can be a source of real concern for both these teams. Well, there are certain recommendations to improve the synergy between the captain as well as the crew. Increase mutual knowledge and awareness of issues. Uh, I would suggest that they have a lot of synergies and a lot of communication between themselves to try and make the other person understand the general knowledge as well as awareness of certain issues. Provide appropriate behavioral options can be one way to improve the synergy and opportunities for practice. At times, the cockpit crew can practice the behavior of uh, the cabin crew and likewise, the cabin crew can practice the behaviors of a captain likewise. 
the communication is important and fundamental to any kind of synergy so it's important that both these teams communicate with each other very well well friends that brings us to the complete conclusion on this particular module on flight deck well it has been interesting teaching you this module and making you understand the different aspects of the cockpit crew right from the controls the instrumentals of that particular cockpit to energy and synergy as well as stresses between the captain as well as the flight crew thank you for watching us